このホテルはインク入りスパゲッティを食わせようってのかああい,いえお客様これはネーロと言いまして新鮮なイカの炭が入っているので黒いんでございますよはっはい、こんにちは、ガッツー。今回は、ジョジョズ・バザール・アドベンチャー。スクイッドインク・スパゲティの、レシピ for which we're gonna need、some squid ink。Cuttlefish ink like this is a little bit hard to find, but you can order it on Amazon. Dried squid ink pasta like this stuff is available at your friendly neighborhood grocer, but to get the flavor, texture, and appearance we're after, we need to make our own. And since my kitchen scale just ran out of batteries, we're gonna eyeball this. About two and a half cups of flour, place in the bowl of a stand mixer, make a well in the center, and crack in Four large eggs, along with one heaping tablespoon of the jet black squid. Oh, don't smell that. That smells really bad. But don't worry, it tastes really good. Very subtle and briny, and not the way it smells, which is reminiscent of ocean trash. Go ahead and gently beat that into the flour with a fork until a thick slurry is formed, at which point we're going to affix dough hooks and mix on medium, medium low speed for eight to ten minutes. Now, since we weren't able to weigh out our ingredients, after about five minutes, we're going to check the consistency of the dough, adding flour or water as necessary. Necessary until a smooth, tacky, not sticky pasta dough is achieved, which we're going to wrap in plastic wrap and let rest at room temperature for at least 30 minutes up to one hour. Now, if you've never been on a wedding registry so you don't have a stand mixer, we can still do this by hand. But if you, for example, host a hand and table centric cooking show, you might want to take some steps to protect them because this stuff does stain. So I'm starting off the dough the exact same way in a bowl, but once a thick slurry is reached, I'm going to dump it out onto my work surface and start coaxing it together into a Cohesive mass. If you're unable to weigh your ingredients, this is the better way to make pasta because you can just sort of introduce more flour to the party from the tabletop as is necessary. Anyway, once our pasta dough is done resting, it's time to start rolling it out. Give it a little poke, and then we're going to cut the dough into four pieces, wrapping the remaining three while we work on the first quarter. First, I'm going to dust it liberally with flour, roll it out a bit, and then pass it through the roller on its widest setting. And then I'm going to start laminating the dough by folding it into thirds and passing it back through the roller three to four. To five to even six times, adding flour as necessary until the right consistency is achieved. All this working of the dough is going to help make it more toothsome or al dente down the line. Then, one notch at a time on the roller, we're going to start rolling it out thinner and thinner, dusting with flour as necessary between rolls. Then, I'm going to cut this thing in half around setting number five so it doesn't get too, too long. Roll out each sheet individually until I get to the second to thinnest setting. Affix spaghetti cutter, dust liberally with flour, and pass it on through. Go ahead and submit a gif of that to Reddit. Oddly satisfying, and lift the pasta away and sort of twist it into a kind of knot in order to keep the strands from getting too kinky. Place on a liberally floured rim baking sheet, rinse and repeat with the remaining pasta dough until you've got yourself some squid ink spaghetti. Cover that with plastic wrap and keep it in the fridge until you're ready to go because for now it's time to focus on the sauce. The only mise I have to put on plus is to open a can of tomato puree, finely mince half a shallot, and peel one very large clove of garlic. Then, in a high walled saute pan, I'm going to heat some olive oil until it's shimmering. Is this shimmer? Yeah, it is. At which point, we're going to dump in our finely minced shallot and saute that for about one minute until it's nice and soft and translucent. We're then going to crush in our single clove of garlic and sprinkle in a generous sprinkle of red pepper flake if you want a little heat. Let those flavors get to know each other for no longer than one minute or until very fragrant before deglazing with some dry white wine like Sauvignon Blanc. And then we're going to drop in some of our tomato. Oh, Jesus. Maybe more gently this time, drop in a couple tablespoons of tomato puree. We're then going to simmer that until the quarter cup of wine or so that we've added. Has all but boiled off, which will take about three to five minutes. So, this is the point that we want to start cooking our pasta because that's only going to take about one minute to cook. Fresh pasta cooks very quickly. So, during the no more than 90 seconds that that spends in the water, we're going to add some squid ink to our sauce, about two heaping tablespoons worth. Jojo's mouth is clearly stained black when he eats the pasta, so there's definitely squid ink in the sauce. Then, once our pasta is done cooking, we're dumping it directly into the saute pan along with a few tablespoons of the pasta cooking water, which is going to help make the Sauce more cohesive and smooth. Once all the pasta is in the saute pan, we want to rigorously agitate it, toss it if you can, to really aerate that sauce and get it nice and creamy. You might need to season to taste with a little bit of kosher salt, but squid ink is pretty salty, so taste it first. Then we're going to use this lovely trick that I saw on the internet, where we use the help of a ladle to make a perfect twisted mound of our pasta. I know this isn't exactly how it's plated up in the anime, but this is the way I like to plate up my pasta. I'm sorry. Look at this stuff. It's like alien meets mind flayer meets venom meets tar. 
but after my first trepidatious bite, I can tell you this stuff tastes awesome. The sauce is primarily a lovely tomato, white wine, garlic affair, but it's lightly scented with the essence of the sea, and true to form, it stains my mouth a deep, inky squid ink ebony. So mission accomplished there, and it ended up in the Clean Plate Club, if you can call this the Clean Plate Club.